Warriors fans, of course, will know and have a lot of time for Todd Payton with the work that he did here. Joined the Cowboys ahead of the 2021 season, finished 15th that year, just seven wins first season. Brought in a number of squad players, but there are no superstars or headline acquisitions. Improved to 17 wins, third on the table, and we're one win away from the grand final. He joins us. It's a really warm welcome to the program. Todd, thanks so much for your time, mate. No dramas. Thanks for having me. And congratulations on the Dally M. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It was a nice little consolation prize <laughs> after after losing a prelim at home. So still trying to get over the disappointment of that. But, um, you know, a few more days and I'll have my head around it. OK, well, that was going to be my question. You know, how long does it linger? Is it the rock under the beach towel all summer or what? Oh, look, the disappointment will subside. Um, I will still think about it for a long time. And by the time we come back and start our pre-season, I should be ready to go. Yeah, you've had grand final experience yourself, of course, assistant at the Cowboys in 2015 when they won the grand final. So, And you won with the Tigers as well, didn't you? So you've been there before and obviously, you know, so so very, very close this time too. Yeah, and that's the, the most disappointing part for me is that I know how hard it is to get to that game and particularly to have an opportunity at home we just didn't capitalise from a winning position. They're the parts that hurt the most. Um, we've got a, a lot of young guys in our team that probably think this type of stuff will happen year after year. They've played schoolboy footy and been successful in that arena. But NRL's a different beast, and it's really hard to um, get as far as we did um, with a lot of things in our favour. So, yeah, that's where the disappointment stands from. Yeah, Todd, very perceptive of you to say so. Nathan Hindmarsh has been on the program already, Matt Elliott as well. And one of the questions I put to them is that, you know, it's often said that, you know, a lot of young players, they get to a final and they think, oh, okay, we lost that one, but it's okay, it'll happen again. The thing is, for most players in a lifetime, it never happens at all, mate. Yeah, you're right. Um, I think I only played him four as a player in 16 years. Um, and it was one through injury. So... Yeah, that's that's not all that common. So, and we had a lot of things go well for us this year. We we, we didn't have a lot of injuries. Um, we played in Queensland for the first what ten rounds. We didn't have to go to, to Sydney in that period of the competition. Um, in saying that, we had some really good wins and played some really good footy. Um, but it's you know, like I said, it's just a difficult place to get to the final four, let alone getting in the grand final. Getting the grand finals is a really good achievement. So. Really envious of what Parramatta and Penrith are going to do on Sunday. I'll ask you about that in a second. I want your thoughts on that. We've just had a text message come through. It's 505 on the text. Please ask Todd about the forward pass at the touch judges and the referee miss that cost the Cowboys the season. How does that happen when the ref can see the replays? And it just, I mean, it, it adds to a, a, you know, a litany of these things which become folklore, don't they, for the Cowboys? Yeah, we've got a bit of a history of stuff going against us in finals like that. Um, look, the pass was forward, but we had enough time to get ourselves out of that, and we did. We were 20 to 12 up with 25 minutes to go. So we know that referees are human. They make mistakes. Um, you know, like we get emails from week to week admitting you know, penalties, shouldn't have been penalties, uh, missed calls and tries. So it's, it's not a surprise to me or us. We just, yeah, we were just... We're in a position to get past that, and I just hope it's um, not a talking point after the game on Sunday as well. Same. Look, you started this season, as I said, and you don't need reminding of the stats, 15th in the first season with seven wins, and turning it around, and all season everyone's you know saying, what a surprise package, and the Cowboys, are you playing better than what you expected and everything else? What were, what were your realistic expectations at the start of the season? What, what goals did you set? Um, we didn't say anything as a group. Um, like, in my mind, I knew we were a top eight team. I knew we had the talent. Um, I've seen some things over the pre-season period that got me more and more optimistic. We won our first trial match against the Broncos and um, quite convincingly in tough conditions. It's really wet and slippery. We only conceded a try. Um, went in the next round, we got beat by the dogs at home, and it was a 6 4 scoreline. And in those two games, we were able to defend our try line for long periods. And um, I had some belief in me, but I also were, was very wary of the fact that, you know, Broncos and 
Bulldogs weren't high on the ladder the previous year either. So um, it's probably the game we beat Canberra. We beat Broncos in round three away. We beat Canberra. Must have been round six, I think it was, from 12 nil down in Canberra and won 18 12. And then we beat Parramatta in Darwin, where we were just defending for the first 20, 25 minutes. And it was really hot and oppressive conditions, and we ran away with that. And that was probably the period where not just myself, but the rest of the group really started to believe that you know we were a good team. And um, yeah, we flipped our, our win loss record from the year before to um, seven and seven seven wins and. 15 losses or something like that and flipped it on its head so yeah we took some good strides forward yeah, I'm fascinated. I've just written that down pre-season because everyone looks at pre-season and says nothing about nothing matters in pre-season. And, pre- and you, you know, you look at the NFL and they don't even play their players in pre-season, and yet you got that much out of pre-season. Pre-season means a lot to a lot of people in different ways. You know, the, the teams up the top they they don't want to get injured um, or injuries. Um, teams down the bottom they've got a point to prove. Um, but for our guys. My, our, our vision as coaches was to prove to our players that they could do things physically that they didn't believe that they could do before. So we, we put them under some physical, mental pressure day after day. And, you know, in our game, um, we've got some tremendous athletes and if you can set a task to them, they, they'll handle that on their ears. What we tried to do was upset their rhythm and do things that they weren't expecting. We've got a hill here, Castle Hill, um, we threw it on them the first day back at training. Um, it's got no significance to playing football whatsoever, but it's just a mental and physical challenge to get to the top as quick as you can. And the conditions up here are ridiculously hot at that time of year. Uh, we did it a couple of weeks later. Um, and again, they needed to beat their team their time from the first time. Um, and I knew as soon as... It, we threw it upon them that it was four or five guys that weren't going to be able to do that, just the look on their faces and the way that they reacted. Wow. And then by the time we did it, the third time was our last day of the pre-season period before Christmas, and we'd had a four-kilometre um, post session, which is pretty much half a match, and they were tackling, and uh, it was four 10-minute blocks. I said, right, oh, boys, let's go. Go and put your joggers on. We're going up the hill. And at that point, they all sort of looked at each other and laughed, and we had uh, 10 guys beat their personal best and Tommy did and set a record um, for the club. So um, at that point, I, I thought, you know, we've taken some good strides forward mentally as well as physically. Todd, how much of it means... I know these are kind of clichés and I hope you don't mind the questions in that, mate, but how much of it means to you what that you see in a person as... You know the players have got skills. They're not, they're not in front of you if they aren't yep. really good league players. What What do you look at? What do you see? Well, the recruitment guys, they, they always give us talented kids and can't play NRL if you're not talented, but... Um, if you're, you've got character and you've got resilience, you're going to be in the contest week after week. Um, if you've got elite talent of kids, you'll win some games here and there and then you'll get let down. But if you've got both talent and character, then anything's possible. So from that point of view, we push our recruitment guys to make sure that they send us good kids first. Um, those that are reliable, um, those that are on time, that work hard, um, and playing the game means something to them. Not kids that have always had things land at their feet and get things easily. Um, I'd much rather a kid that's had to work hard for something because when things get tough, he's going to he's going to dig in. I'm asking you these questions because you've got Chad Townsend, you've got Peter Hiku and Jermaine Tonua Brown. These names are familiar to Warriors fans, of course. You look at a guy like Peter Hiku, and as far as his Warriors future goes, it didn't like he like he had much there. And you know, he his form fluctuated. He was inconsistent and things. He comes over to you. I don't know whether it's a last chance saloon. I don't know what you say to these these guys, but that guy has just broken leg to play for you this year. It's been so impressive. Yeah, so Pat had a shoulder reconstruction last year at the Warriors. So um, obviously he played hurt for a period of time before he went and got it operated on. And then when he came back, I thought he was pretty strong 
in the final four or five games that he played there, and he was playing at five eight for a couple of those. I know in my time there at the Warriors, we had uh, the year before I got there, he was on the right, and um, Dave Fusatua was the leading try scorer uh, for the Warriors in the competition. And then we moved him to the left the year that I got there, and uh, Kenny Mamalo became the, the leading try scorer. And right. Pet's the type of player that everyone loves to play with because he's a competitor. Um, Blake Green had a high opinion of him and his skills, and he just made players around him better. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to get him here. He's a skillful footballer that could cover a number of positions for us and a smart kid. Are you are you second chance saloon guy? If somebody lets you down, how do you deal with that? Uh, depends in what way. I'm okay if they have a crack at something and it doesn't work out, but if they've not been truthful or you know not owned up to their mistake, then you've got a fair way to come back from from, from my point of view. Is that always how you've done it? Who who did you learn that from, or is that just you as a person? Um, probably just me as a person. You know, our game's built on trust. Um, as a as a as a player, you, you wanted to trust the, the bloke next to you, your teammate, and you wanted to be there, um, making sure that you didn't let him down when things were tough. And that's what we're trying to build in our in our squad here, you know, putting the team first, doing what's right for the bloke beside him, paying the price physically, and our game's not easy, and winning hurts. If you want to win, you've got to go to a dark place week after week, and that's something that our leaders have actually um, pushed to our, our younger guys, and they've done a great job throughout this season. Todd Payton is with us. I've got a couple more questions, if that's all right. I don't want to, I don't want to spend all, all day yeah. <laughs> you're down the frame. Is that okay? Go for your life. Okay, five Cowboys players earned representative uh, debuts in Origin this year. How proud are you of that stat? Yeah, yeah, I'm really proud. I was, I was lucky enough to go down and watch that third origin. And even though I grew up in New South Wales, um, I was oh, don't like say proud it. dad. Oh, don't say yeah, it. Don't, don't, come on, dad. don't say it. Come on. No, no, no. I'm not, I didn't cheer for him. But when Tommy did and Bow were involved in that first try, um, I was just really happy for those two in particular. Tommy was on the scrap heap before he came to our club and he's... You know, he's now a rep player and he's lived out a childhood dream and um, to see him grow from where he was to where he's now as both a man and as a footballer, it's, yeah, it's, it's heartwarming. Look, I, I, I don't know who, you know, how, what, what, all the details of the story, but whoever the coach was, I think had rung him up and said, because there's so many injuries in that, and said, Tommy, you're playing for Queensland. And I think his reply was, I'm not going to let Queensland down or something like that. I loved hearing that story. I'm, I'm, not, sure, I'm not sure I've got the details exactly right. Yeah, it was Billy, so... He was 18th man for the first two. Um, can't quite remember who was who pulled out with injury. Um, and you know, Billy went to him and said, "Listen, mate, I'm, you're you're going to get your start this week in the in the decider." And he said, "I'm not going to let you, and I'm not going to let Queensland down." And um, he didn't. He played really strong. Valentine Holmes is another one um, who was who was here, and then he goes over to the NFL. He comes back. Um, he's had such a resurgent season as well. I mean, breaking shark hearts with that with that field goal, but just his overall presence in the team. I mean, this is one of your superstar players. How how have you how have you handled him and and everything that he brings or the periphery that he brings, and what kind of bloke is he? Mate, he's a professional. Um, he's a good kid. He works hard. I think he learnt in the States how cutthroat and professional you have to be. Um, professional sport can be, and particularly over there. Um, if you don't get your job done, you get moved on really That's quickly. It. Yeah, man. He said he grew up, he said he grew up quite a bit over there. Um, he come back here, and I, I never knew the kid. He's really professional. He goes about his business in the right way. Um, a bit of a new position for him this year, and he just went after it. He wanted information from the coaches after each session. Um, and he improved from week to week and in the big moments in big games Val puts his hand up he wants his hands all over the ball and that's a that's a really good sign of a quality player This is uh, Todd Payton with us Look, Warriors fans in this country mate we've got Ivan Cleary is, uh, on, on a very short list and yourself and think how the hell do we let you go mate how the hell do we get you back <laughs> Never say never mate Never, never say never, never. 
Finally, when you're watching the matches, I love it when the... I know I, you'd probably hate it, but when the camera comes on you, you're always leaning... You're in the same pose. You're leaning against that wall in your white shirt. You've got your arms crossed, and you don't look as though you're having that much fun, but I always wonder what's going on on the inside. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a bit going on. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it, but I'm the type... I can't sit still in the box, so I tend to stand and, and walk around and just chew gum, so... Um, just trying to stay in the moment, which is hard to do at different times. You, you get lost in your own thoughts and try and work out how you can help the team um, if it needs shift, to, the game needs a shift or, or whatever. So I am enjoying myself, don't get me okay. wrong. It's a, it's a great job. Can we ask you who finally who you think is going to win this grand final? Oh, um, I think Penrith across the team are a better, better team. But that doesn't mean you always win games. Sure. Um, I think Parramatta have got a lot of emotion going into it. Um, so I'm interested to see who, who's going to win, even though I'm not that keen to watch. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Hey, look, uh, thank you so, so much for your time. I know that this is the end of the year for you and you're really busy and you don't have to pick up your phone and do this kind of stuff. So we really appreciate it, Todd. Thank you so much, mate. Nah, too easy. Good on well, you. So thanks for having me. Okay. Todd Payton with us.